that you have joined us today as we worship from St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Today, we will recall the pain and anguish that we felt on September 11th, 2001. And we will come together and remember and pray for those who suffered the tragic loss of their loved ones. But we also come to examine where we have come since then. So we gather today to ask God for blessing in this time and in this place. We will lift our voices and humble our hearts, seeking to know again that we are in God's hands. We are here to listen and to follow to the leading of God. So in this time, May we grow ever closer in spirit and in love as members of God's holy family. Let us do what we have come to do. Let us worship God. Let us begin this time together with a word of prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, when we are bewildered and the world is all noise and confusion around us, be the calm that we desire. When we don't know which way to go and are filled with fear, help us to remember you are with us. Put your hand on our shoulder and let your strength invade our weakness. Help us to step forward in faith. Give us your light and your truth, and let them be our guide. 
For we pray this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Today, our scripture reading comes to us from the Hebrew book of Exodus. We're looking in the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 19. Now, this piece of scripture is following the death of the Egyptian firstborn, or the 10th plague. And Pharaoh has told Moses and Aaron to take the people of Israel and leave Egypt. And as the people are preparing to leave, God gave Moses the instructions for the Passover. And Moses instructed the people concerning the Feast of the Unleavened Bread and the consecration of the firstborn. Then the people departed from Egypt, led by God, by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. But when Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, Pharaoh led an army of chariots to pursue the Israelites. So let's hear a portion of this story as it comes to us in the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus. We are reading verses 19 through 25 as they come to us from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Hear now these words from the Holy Scriptures. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their left and on their right. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into a panic. The Lord clogged their chariot wheels so that they could turn with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What do you remember about September 11th, 2001? Do you remember exactly where you were when that pillar of cloud rose from the rubble in Lower Manhattan? It's a painful memory that is burned into the minds of so many of us. This past Friday was the 19th, the 19th anniversary of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001. Unbelievable. But an anniversary is an opportunity, an opportunity to contemplate, to reflect, to persevere, but it's also an opportunity to be different. Have we seen the power of God at work in the world since that tragic day? Of course we have. Have we learned that forgiveness and reconciliation can be a catalyst for peace? I'm not so sure about that one. So, how has the events of 9-11 changed us? For better or for worse? Let's be clear. The power of God has always been at work in the world. God powerfully led the Hebrew people through the Red Sea, delivering them from the bondage of Egypt, delivering them from one people controlling 
another. And we saw the work of God on September 11th, 2001. We saw it in the self-sacrificing response of the first responders. But we also saw it in the selfless acts of compassion as everyday people reached out to each other. But here we are again in the midst of a global pandemic, wildfires burning out of control in the Western states, racial reckoning being challenged around the world. And I believe that today, just like on September 11th, 2001, there are probably a lot of people who are asking, where is God in all of this? Let me tell you about a man named Ernest Gordon. He was a captain in the Scottish military during World War II. He spent three years in a Japanese prison camp during World War II, and he recalled his experience in his book, To End All Wars. Now, at the time when Gordon was serving, he was a self-proclaimed agnostic who underwent very torturous events that led him to being placed in the death ward, which was a place in the prison camp that was designated for those who were not expected to survive. Now, in this death ward, there were two young soldiers who cared for Ernest Gordon, a Methodist named Dusty Miller, who was a simple gardener from Newcastle upon Tyne in England, who did not lose his faith and never met the cruel treatment he received with any kind of anger. The other young man was named Dinty Moore, who was a devout Roman Catholic. These two young men gave 24-hour care to Gordon. They would boil rags and clean and massage his diseased legs every day. Gordon was so impressed by Dusty Miller's simplicity and his firm Christian faith in the face of severe treatment that they received at the hands of their captors, Gordon realized it was through these two young faithful men that even though as horrible as things were, the Spirit of God was in their midst and it changed the direction of Gordon's life. Gordon's survival was a surprise to everyone around him. But Gordon recognized that it was the selfless compassion of these two young attendants that played a vital role in his making it through this ordeal. As a result, not only Gordon, but many of the POWs that were also in the prison camp experienced both a revival of faith and a hope for life through the faithful actions of these two young soldiers. My friends, if the church is doing its job, binding the wounds, comforting those who are grieving, feeding the hungry, then the world would not be wondering where they could find God's presence. They would know that the presence of God is found in the people of God.
Hi, it's good to see all of you again today. So today we've been talking about some kind of some sad things and some scary things. And I wondered if you've seen anything that's been scary, maybe on the news or in the newspaper. There's a lot of things happening that we don't understand. Um, and you know, when I don't understand something, I look for somebody to help me. And I don't know if you know Mr. Rogers or not, but Mr. Rogers was a man who had a television show and he liked to talk to kids. And he said, when you see something that scares you or makes you afraid, you should always look for the helpers. Like, I don't know, maybe you have seen that there's a big fire out in California. So who could we find helping there? Of course, we could find the firefighters, right? But I wanted to remind you something today. Always look for people who can help. But who is always there to help us? Who's the number one person we can ask? Of course, it's Jesus. We can say a prayer anytime if we're afraid or we're scared. And Jesus will come and hug our hearts so that we don't have to be quite as afraid anymore. So I want you, when you see things that make you a little bit afraid, or if you're feeling a little bit of afraid, I want you to remember who's there ready to help you. And number one, you can always call on Jesus. I'm so glad that you're here. If you started school, I hope that school's going well. Um, why don't we include that in our prayer today? as we say a prayer. I'll say the words first, you repair, repeat after me, and we'll pray about school starting and also that Jesus is always there to help you. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Help us remember that he wants to help us and all we have to do is ask. When things get a little scary, Jesus is by our side. And as we start a school new year, a new school year, we pray that Jesus would be by our side every day. Amen. All right. Have a good week. I will talk with you real soon. The world is really a crazy place. And each of us desire to bring a different prayer to be heard by God. But let us remember that as we join our hearts together, God not only hears each of our prayers, but responds by binding us in true love. So bring what you have in your heart as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. O oh, strong and patient God, hear our prayers today. Though we hardly know what to say, our prayers can seem so difficult and so unfocused. 
But Lord Jesus Christ, we know that you are the way of peace. So come into our broken lives and our broken land with your healing, present love. Help us to be willing to bow before you in true repentance and to live our lives in real forgiveness. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hard hearts and consume the pride and prejudices which separate us. Fill us, O Lord, with your perfect love, a love that casts out our fear and bind us together in that unity which points the way to your kingdom. O oh God, we pray for the world around us, beginning, of course, with the people who belong to us, the members of our families, our friends, and those who we share our worries with, those who depend on us. And we pray for the leaders of governments and those whose words and actions will influence the situation in our world that they might not tolerate injustice, neither will they perpetuate it. We pray that they will not seek refuge in violence or make rash or ill-considered decisions about the futures of other people. Oh God, we pray for all who live in the shadow of the world's events, for those from whom their plight is shadowed by the attention of the world because our attention, O oh God, is so easily diverted. So we pray today for the hungry, the poor, the broken, and the unloved. We pray for all of those whose commitment to faith urges them to earnestly seek a common peace and a common justice. And we pray for those of all faiths who abhor the way of discord, that they might join together in spirit and action to rededicate themselves to find the way of peace. Oh God, we pray for those families and communities whose loved ones have been horribly and tragically ripped from their lives. O oh God, and we pray for ourselves, that our confusion, fear, anger, and vulnerability might not so overwhelm us that we would be become defined by our weaknesses, but rather through the strength of our faith, that we might know the strength to overcome weakness with clarity, confidence, and compassion. We pray amidst the confusion of many different and confusing feelings and thoughts that our anger will not lead to rage and revenge, that our fear will not lead to panic and chaos, and that our extreme sadness will not lead to despair and a readiness to give up. So we pray, O oh God, for faith, courage, and hope to walk into tomorrow with the strength of your love and mercy. O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayers, for we seek you and you alone. Calm our bodies and minds with the peace which passes all understanding and makes us radiant with joy. And may we realize your great mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord, as we join our voices together, praying the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray, praying these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we feel overwhelmed by the storms of life, God enters our hearts with redeeming love. When our fears overtake us and we cannot find our way, God gives us direction that we might faithfully navigate each and every day. So we return with thanks. We return with thanks through the gifts that we give and the offerings that we make. There are several ways in which you can make a financial gift to the ministries of St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. You can text the amount you would like to give to 856-656-4103, and a return text will come to you and tell you how to complete that transaction. Or you can go to our website, www saumcnj.org and click on the Give tab, and you will be led through the steps you need to take to make an online offering. Or you can simply place the amount you would like to give in an envelope and address it to the church and put it in the mail. Help us to continue to show the world that no matter what befalls us, God is with us on our path, bringing us courage and hope. It, that is why, in gratitude, we ask God to bless all of our offerings with the confidence that each one of these gifts will be used for ministries of peace and hope. We thank you for your generosity. So how has our experience of 9-11 really changed us? After passing safely through the Red Sea, the faith of the Hebrew people, the depth of their trust in God was deeper. Over the past 19 years, has our faith become deeper? Is there evidence that our faith is any stronger? Is there evidence that our faith is making an impact where we live? On December 18, 2001, Congress passed a joint resolution designating September 11th of each year as Patriot Day. It is a day when we can remember the more than 3,000 innocent people who lost their lives on that September morning. The resolution requests that each year the president issue a proclamation calling on all American people and state and local governments to observe the day with appropriate programs and activities.
Those activities could include remembrance services, candlelight vigils, moments of silence, and flying the flag at half-staff. Did we hear any of that happening this past week? In 2003, when commemorating Patriot Day, George W. Bush made a proclamation that said, on that day and in its aftermath, we saw the greatness of America in the bravery of its victims, in the heroism of it, the first responders who laid down their lives for others, in the compassion of people who stepped forward to help those that they had never met, and in the generosity of millions of Americans who enriched our country with acts of service and kindness. What happened? We are living in a time where we lack humanity. We are better than who we have become. Is there any evidence that our faith is being forged and not destroyed? We are living in one of the most divisive times in our world's histories. One of the most divisive times in our communities, in our nation, and in our church. If forgiveness is at the heart of Christ's message, then don't we need to remember the prayer that Jesus prayed as the world prepared to put him on a cross? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Well, I think it is time for us to know what we are doing. It is time for us to realize what will bring peace into this world. Because friends, there is nothing, nothing in the message of Jesus that promotes or encourages divisiveness. Actually, there is everything in that message that calls for a life of forgiveness. Now, you may be familiar with the prayer that is often called the Prayer of St. Francis. But this prayer was actually published in a small spiritual magazine called La Cochette, which means the little bell. It was published by an organization of the Catholic Church in Paris. The author's name was not given, and we think that it probably wasn't St. Francis after all, but maybe the founder of the magazine, Father Esther Bocquerel. Now, this prayer, this prayer was heavily publicized during both World War I and World War II, and I think we need to start publicizing this prayer again today with our lives. These are the words of this prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardon that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This prayer is the very basic message of Jesus. And if we profess to follow, if we profess to trust, if we profess to emulate Jesus, then the words of this prayer is what we need to be about. 
because it is this type of behavior that will not only allow the people of to know that the presence of God is all around us, but it is in this type of behavior, the behavior of those like Dusty Miller and Dinty Moore, that we will bring about a revival of faith and hope for the lives in which we are living. My friends, we are the light of peace, and the world needs our light. Once again, we have discovered that even though we are separated by distance, we can embrace the peace that calls us to be a worshiping community. Do you remember singing the song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands as a Young Child? He's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole wide world in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands god's got the whole world in his hands i think for the world to become a better place it's time for us to start believing the words to that song living 
the words to that song. So we have to remember that we must stay well, both physically and spiritually. We've got to always remember to be kind. We must always wear a mask, not only for our sake, but for everyone's sake. And we need to keep a safe distance between ourselves and others. Because it is time to go in peace into God's world to serve and love others. So we need to go with confidence that God's presence is with us. And we need to go into this world with messages of peace, hope, and reconciliation. And most of all, we have got to go motivated by love. So go in peace and be the love of God wherever you are. Amen.